What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. All right, so in today's video, I wanted to talk about the new update to the Botanic Tree and Grass add-on for Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about Botanic on the channel before. It's a very complete library of different trees and grasses, as well as a pretty complete tool set for scattering those trees and grasses inside of Blender. And in particular, I wanted to talk about this new update that they've come out with, and I thought now would be a good time because it's also on sale as a part of the Blender Market Summer Sale. If you see this video and are not as a part of the sale, this is still a great tool, um, but I thought I'd go ahead and talk about it this week. Now, note that there are three different versions in here, not including the studio versions, which I'm not really going to talk about, um, but you've got the starter version, which comes with 4% of the assets. You've got the light version, and then you've got the full version. So depending on what you want, um, those are going to be available on the Blender Market. And I'll link to this in the notes down below. And so specifically, I wanted to talk about this new update, which is the high and dry update. And so it's done a few different things in here um, in order to make usability a little bit better, as well as adding some new assets. All right, so they've added a number of different kinds of like grasses in here. Like for example, we've got like the dry grasses that are now in here. So um, you've got those in here and they're ready to go. And so remember that we do have the ability within Scatter to actually select a surface and then click on the plus button right here and actually add um, a scatter system in here, right? So there's different fields, um, other things like that. So in this case, we'll go down to the grass and look at our grass option. We've got options in here now for like the dry and the dry with leaves. We can bring those in and scatter them on this surface really easily. And so in addition to being able to scatter those assets in here and having the ability to adjust like the particles, the seed, other things like that, if you want to bring those individual assets in, it's as easy as just dragging them onto your scene. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to reset my transformations. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scale it down a little bit, but this is one of the new trees that's in here. So a number of these different juniper trees in here, other things like that. So that's been kind of an expansion of that asset library in here. And as you can see, there's just a ton of different trees, different flowers, different grasses available in here. So it's kind of a one-stop shop to a certain degree, um, unless you're looking for something very specific. Um, it's got a pretty deep library, right? You've got your tropical trees down here. You've got weeds, all of those different things. And then remember that you can also scroll down into this particle system after you've created it, right? So we're gonna go to this grass dry particle system that's in here, and you can actually add objects to it as well. So if I click on the plus button down here and I decide that I want to add one of these weeds or a different kind of the dry grass in here right so let's say we wanted to add let, let's add something that looks more like a flower so we're going to go into a weed maybe add um, possibly this red clover in here I'm going to click on OK notice what that does is that adds that to this system and you can adjust how often that shows up in here Right, so often or rarely, it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so I'm gonna bump this back up to one, but notice how scattering these things is really easy. And so one of the cool things about this version and something I haven't quite had the ability to um, play around with is the assets should now be compatible with GeoScatter, meaning you should be able to scatter them with GeoScatter. Now I will say I haven't quite gotten that one working yet. Um, I'm still working on that, but um, that is listed as a new feature. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this is um, the ability now to adjust the hue per leaf or the color of the assets. So we're going to go back into Blender. I'm going to scroll out and let's say that we wanted to add a tree in here, right? From the asset browser version. So I'm going to go into my deciduous trees right here and let's just pick a tree. It doesn't really matter which one. We'll drag this one in. So it's a pretty big tree, but if we look at it, right, it's a pretty standard tree but you can take these trees and they've now got the ability within the adjustments to adjust the way that the colors work in here. So let's go ahead and let's add a light. We're gonna add a sunlight. I don't wanna do anything too special with it. And actually I'm gonna move this over and scale it down. But, um, so what we're gonna have, we're gonna to toggle over into rendered mode right here. Probably need to bump the power of that light up so we'll bump the, that up to like 10 so you can see it. But now that tree has the ability to adjust the brightness of the color that's on here, right? So you can kind of adjust that, but then you've also got the ability to toggle through the different seasons on the trees, right? So I can take this tree and I can toggle it between spring, winter, and autumn. But then I can also, if we go back to summer, set this so that we've got some different colors 
on different branches, right? So notice how I can use this in order to add some variation to those leaves in here, just like this. You can also adjust the hue per leaf, which is going to give you a more varied look in here. So if you want to use this to adjust, and notice how we could like duplicate this tree, rotate it around a little bit, but notice how that tree is going to act different than this tree, allowing you to actually edit and adjust the individual trees depending on what you want in here. So I could take this one and make it more of a brown, other things like that. So um, pretty good addition to the botanic library in my opinion. All right, so these features are in addition to the features that were already contained in the original Botanic. So I think this is a pretty solid upgrade. I'm less excited about the new assets. I mean, new assets are always great, but I'm more excited about those different color change options that are in here. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about Botanic? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.